I'm Roxy Deere from the Wayne County Area Chamber of Commerce. And on this week's episode of Chamber Chat, we're going to be chatting with Julie Frame from the Barn at Helm and Katie Alia from Three Rivers. Welcome, ladies. Hey. Awesome. For having us. So, Katie, why don't we start with you? And you're the chair of the Agribusiness Committee for the Chamber. Explain what they do and why they're important to the Chamber. The Agribusiness Committee um, has been in existence for a while. Um, Our main goal over the years has been to promote agriculture, and that is a huge thing in Wayne County. Um, We have a lot of farmers of all different kinds, and just to highlight what they bring and the importance, the value that um, they have for Wayne County has always been a part of our goal. And part of that falls with the farm tour that we're really excited to be planning this year. Okay. And so the farm tour is coming up and we are going to be at Julie Frame's farm, which is, it's a farm. It's a flower farm. Julie, tell us a little bit more about the barn at home. Well, thanks for having me. The barn at Helm is um, actually the home place that Tim and I um, have lived for the last 30 plus years and have farmed and corn and soybeans. And then in the last six years, we've added flour production to our um, crops as well. So um, we operate as a florist. And so we're kind of unique in the fact that we are using flowers that go out in arrangements and the flowers are all grown right here in Wayne County. So when people call to order things from us from um, March clear until November, I just go right out in the fields and cut those flowers. So for weddings and funerals and farmer's market and things like that, they're just local grown, beautiful flowers, a little different than some things that people have seen in the past. I know, Julie, I receive a lot of bouquets from you, and I, they're always my favorites. I send a lot of bouquets, too, and they always get so many great compliments on how beautiful they are. Yeah. Katie, why don't you tell a little bit about the history of the farm tour and why, um, like, where we've been in the past and um, why we chose the barn at home? Yeah, so we've had a number <laughs> of really unique tours. Every tour has been unique. Um, over the past years, we have been out to um, the Sankeys. I'm, no, not the Sankeys. Golliers. You put me on the spot. Thank you. <laughs> Golliers. Um, we've been to Hagerstown and have seen um, the Bell Strawberry Farm and how they grow and harvest strawberries. That was a very unique year. Um, we have been out to Roxy. You're going to have to help me here. We did um, the Walther's irrigation <laughs> system and cattle. Thank you at the Walther's. <laughs> I have total mom brain. So that's my <laughs> thing right now. Um, the Walther's farm, we got to see their state of the art irrigation system, which is very unique to Wayne County. Um, we have been to, um, um, oh my gosh. Um, the orchard. Thank yep. you, Julie. <laughs> it's a team so orchard. Around this is brutal. You'll just have to forgive me. Um, and sorry, I had a phone call. Um, so we've had j- just a wonderful showing of farms and getting folks out to these different locations and seeing what it takes um, from a farm operations standpoint is so valuable. Um, so we've really loved having these tours, are excited to be coming to Julie's Flower Farm, um, and are going to see a lot of cool things out there. Julie, I, I know you've, I believe you've been on the farm tours before. What can people expect to learn about at your farm this year? Well, we're super excited to have everybody come out. We have an old barn that um, was the only barn on the property when when we moved in, and it was built in 1900. And so we want people to come and and see that beauty of that old structure. Um, We want people to walk through our flowers. We have tons and tons of rows of just beautiful, unique flowers. And we'll talk about our production of those and use of those. We also have a grain bin gazebo that we just put up and it's really beautiful and it's pretty sentimental because it's from uh, an old grain bin that was on Tim's 
property when he was a kid. And so we went over and took that down and brought it up. And then um, we also will have, um, in the last couple years, we've really felt led to have more of an agro-tourism type mindset, hosting people at the farm, having people come out for a, a nice relaxing evening where they listen to music or they, they come and they you pick. And so um, one of the things that people will get to see when they're there this time is that our sunflower field will be bloomed. And so people will be able to experience that and take pictures. And then we'll um, also walk you around the back where we have more landscaping and, and our personal area where we have our, um, our big deck and things there. And then we're going to also go to the greenhouse so you can see some more different types of production flowers back there so and then I have a big great a big uh, walk-in cooler that people can look at too it's kind of unique different than anything you've seen because um, when you're married to a farmer they know how to build anything and so we have our own homemade walk-in cooler that's uh, amazing cool <laughs> That is, sounds like a great night. Now, one of my favorite parts are, is always the meal. So I have to give a shout out. Radford's will be catering this event. We're really excited about their unique catering as well. And they will be using as many, many locally grown ingredients that they can in their meal. So the biggest concern about everyone right now, and I think what everyone's focused on, is COVID and how we can make this event possible mm -hmm. with all the restrictions. Katie, will you talk a little bit about what we're doing as precautions uh, surrounding COVID? Sure. And um, I misspoke earlier, and I have to correct myself. Bowman's is our was the first tour we went on, not Sankey, because I love Lindsay, and that's <laughs> now her last name to me. Um, so we toured the Bowman's the first year and saw their awesome cattle production. So I just wanted to uh, clarify that. But yeah, from a COVID standpoint, Obviously, a lot different this year, uh, and for different groups having events, um, having to keep in mind what precautions um, and how things will be different. So one of the great things about our farm tour is that they all take place outdoors. So we have that first um, as a positive on our hands. So we have the space literally to keep a distance um, with our groups of folks that we're going through the farm. Um, we're working with the school um, district from a busing standpoint, and um, we always provide um, transportation to the farms because they are in various um, parts of the county. Um, so we're working on a transportation standpoint, limiting probably the number of folks that we're going to be having on a bus at a time. Um, we'll of course have hand sanitizer, um, sanitizing stations out various points throughout the farm so that people can constantly be keeping their hands clean. Um, I'm sure we're gonna have a, we haven't uh, really talked about it, but for anyone that doesn't have a mask, I think most of us have our own supply of those now, um, but we'll have some on hand for anybody that may forget to um, have a mask. And then we're breaking up, probably the biggest change is going to be our dinner. Uh, we normally have a large dinner, um, at either the beginning or end of the tour with the 200 some folks, we're going to be breaking that up now. And, um, our dinner is going to be a stop on the farm tour. So it'll be a much smaller group and will allow us to space out tables further apart, um, with a smaller group. So those are some of the key things that, um, wanted to share that we're working on. Absolutely. Sorry. Thank you, Katie. Um, I know that it's important to all three of us, but also the agribusiness committee to keep an eye on that. And we'll continue to reassess as the mandates come out. And as we continue to hear what's going on in the world, the state and our county. So thank you ladies for being a part of that. Now, this isn't just an event for adults. Uh, we also have a kids zone. And Julie, you may not be as aware of this. I'm going to hand this one over to Katie. But Katie, kids are invited to this. And t talk a little bit more about the kids zone. Yeah, uh, the kids zone is such a um, unique thing that we've offered the last couple farm tours. Um, the first few farm tours we had, the kids came along with their parents, and it was pretty evident that they weren't having as great a time as the adults um, because they're listening to boring people talk um, at stations for two hours. Um, so we, in evaluating our farm tour um, after the years, we thought it would be great to offer 
a space dedicated for the kids that come with their parents on the farm tour where they can play games, um, be entertained, and have a group. Um, in the past, we've used our local FFA groups that can man the kids um, area so that they're not having to go through a boring tour. Then the parents can kind of, you know, have fun, pay more attention to the tour than trying to keep their, um, wrangle their kids. And I have, I could never keep my two year old with me on a farm tour. So um, we wanted to be able to offer that again for the um, tour. <laughs> Uh, Julie's place. We'll be offering that for kids. So parents feel free to bring your kids along and know that they'll have a fun area that they can play games and be entertained while you go on the tour. That's perfect. So I will give a few shout outs to our sponsors. Obviously we have Sugar Creek, Three Rivers. Thank you, Katie. And First Bank Richmond. They um, are three of our biggest sponsors and we're so excited to have them. Um, and we have many other sponsors of the event. If you are interested in buying a ticket, they go on sale August 1st and you can call the chamber office at 765-962-1511 or you can visit our website, wcareachamber.org. Thank you ladies for joining me today. I'm really excited about the farm tour. It's coming. I guess we should probably say the date. How about that? <laughs> it yeah. is August 27th. It will be at the barn at home, uh, but parking will not be at the barn at home. So when you purchase a ticket, um, we'll let you know where the bus locations will be. Okay. Thank you ladies so much for joining me. And up next in the next segment, we're going to be hearing from Harvest, Harvest Land Co-op and their work with agribusiness. So we're talking all things ag tonight. Thank you ladies so much for joining me. Thank you, Roxy. All right, welcome back. My name is Roxy Deer. I'm the Director of Professional Development for the Wayne County Area Chamber of Commerce. And in our last interview, we were joined um, with Julie Frame from the Barnett Helm and Katie Alia from Three Rivers Bank and the Agribusiness Committee. They spoke all about the upcoming farm tour. And in our next interview, I'm really excited to hear from Harvest Land. And today I'm joined with Scott Logue and Lindsay Sankey from Harvest Land. Thank you for joining me. Sure, we're glad to be here. Yes. So, what, Scott, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your role and what Harvest Land is for our guests that have never interacted with Harvest Land? Sure. Um, again, you know, as she said, my name is Scott Logue, and, and um, I'm the CEO, CEO of Harvest Land. Um, I've been with the, the company since graduating college uh, back in the late 90s, so I've had a various, various roles over the years and served in this capacity since 2011. Harvest Land is a farmer-owned cooperative, and we are in both Indiana and Ohio today. Um, when the cooperative system started during the 20s and into the 30s, 1930s, each county in the state of Indiana had a local cooperative. Well, as things evolved and uh, agriculture changed, and these cooperatives were formed to give the farmers a chance to have uh, collective um, ownership of the of their supply chain and as things have evolved over the years through many different mergers and acquisitions just to keep up with the consolidation um, Harvest Lane today operates in, uh, in what was 19 county cooperatives wow. when they originally started in Indiana and Ohio so our trade territory is from the Fort Wayne area to Indianapolis and then from Indianapolis to Cincinnati and Cincinnati to Dayton and then back up to Fort Wayne. So somewhat of a diamond. And there's a couple counties that we don't have locations in, in that area, but, but for the most part, many of those counties we cover as, as our trade territory. Uh, today, we still continue to provide um, supply inputs to farmers. So crop nutrients, crop protection, seed. Um, we also ha have, have the grain elevators where we buy that grain, and then we push that grain back into uh, the end use market. Uh, from there, so we supply that marketing arm for for our local members. Um, today's membership, we in that trade territory, we have approximately four thousand farmer members, and just just slightly over that. Wow. So individual farm operations that that own part of Harvest Land. Um, we we not only as things have evolved, 
we, we have many adjacent businesses that we've expanded in order to, to provide income, a revenue stream to, to be able to work, work towards improvements for, for our farmers. So things such as LP, the LP business um, started out of a necessity for farmers to need uh, LP to dry their grain. And over time, uh, they, they would, things happen such as, uh, well, what about supplying LP to, to my house or my, my um, hog barns or, or things of that nature? And so that evolved into supplying residential LP. And today, we, that's one of our significant businesses for Harvest Land is, is home heat um, mm-hmm. through, li- through liquid propane and through heating oil. So um, we have approximately uh, 15,000 different accounts, home heat accounts in that trade territory that are, are different from our, from our farmer accounts, obviously. So, um, and, and we continue to look for ways to evolve. You know, many different gas stations that we supply fuel to throughout the trade territory. And again, those were just adjacent businesses that, that helped supplement the income to operate this business for the farmers. Wow. Every time I talk to someone from Harvest Land, I learn something new about what you're doing, who you're serving. And it just seems like that number continues to grow um, uh, or experiences and opportunities that you have as well. And so I'm so thankful to have you in the community. Um, I know you're vital to our ag community. And you spoke a little bit about, you know, just the businesses and the day to day operations. We know that the world, I mean, obviously we're on Zoom right now. This is not yeah. a normal time in the world. And so I'm going to ask Lindsay to, I, I reached out to Lindsay a few months ago and I said, how are things going? And she said, nothing's really changed here. Lindsay, will you talk a little bit about how Harvest Land and maybe even just the ag community in general, how they faced COVID-19? Sure. So, you know, as as we're all very well aware, um, come the middle of March, there was a lot of difference in the way Americans live and a lot of difference in operations for businesses. Um, Those of us involved in agriculture, um, we didn't have uh, big decisions to make on whether to shut our doors because we had no um, we had no choice. So as as Scott mentioned, for instance, a huge part of our business is uh, LP, liquid propane and liquid fuels. We still had to fuel municipalities. Um, at that time, school buses. We've still um, had a lot of school routes going in March. Um, uh, fire trucks, um, police fleets, um, community buses, not here, certainly not just here in Wayne County, but all over our trade territory, we had communities that were still operating. So our energy business had to continue as business as normal. It was still March. We were very much still heating homes in um, March, April, into May um, when some of that cold weather came back. Uh, additionally, you know, Harvest Land is uh, our local agriculture company. And as anyone in the community knows, um, spring is our busiest season as we are tasked with getting another crop in the ground. So additionally, we had to take care of those more than 4,000 farmers that have bought shares into Harvest Land. You know, we, we remained open so we could, number one, fuel their tractors to get the seed in the ground, provide the seed the, throughout the season now, their crop protection, um, crop nutrients. Um, we put a lot of um, stress and safety at Harvest Land, and co- this COVID-19 pandemic just compounded that. There was a lot of extra communication to our employees on how to operate correctly with our customers and that and remembering that this is their busy season which equates to our busy season so we can't shut down we we can't close the doors but here's how we need to work with them from 6 feet away and here's how we need to you know um organize delivery on farm delivery with them when we want to keep our our um, employees safe first and also our customers safe so while um it didn't change our hours by any means. We still had, you know, guys working overtime during the pandemic when other businesses were shut down. Um, It certainly changed the way that we operate. Um, It really made us value those relationships we have with growers there, you know, and, and with our employees, 
our, we learned that our employees handled it very differently from one end of the spectrum. Some of them showed up to work every day is just another day at an ag center and others um, showed up maybe real cautious about how they were going to go about their day. And, you know, Scott and I were visiting just earlier this week how proud we are of our over 300 employees wow. that ha handled it with such grace because, um, they, everyone showed up every day and they ask a lot of questions. How do we handle this? You know, we fielded a lot of questions and a lot of calls, but they never took the foot off the gas. I'll give them credit. So we've been extremely fortunate in that way. And I think if you talk to any agriculture group um, uh, in the area, I know Bell's that hosted a farm tour, they still sold strawberries this spring. <laughs> I know um, Bowman Superior Genetics, they're still selling beef this spring, you know, there's, there's everyone is, if you're in ag, um, we still must take care of people and we still must feed people. And so that's what we did. How, and Scott, maybe you can answer this. How do you think COVID will impact ag in the future? You know, um, hopefully not to the degree it has, has this year, because just to reinforce what Lindsay said about our employees to give a little bit of, um, emphasis on, on how critical ag is to, to being something that was considered um, necessary to stay open. We hired nearly 70 seasonal employees during the lockdown. So that, that was a little bit unique, how to process those people, get those through uh, the drug screens, the physicals they needed, and everything was just different. Um, but again, our employees handled it very well. And so, so we didn't lay people off during that time. We were hiring people and looking very, very um, serious, serious at, you know, trying to find the employees that we could bring in and that would be cautious. As far as going, going in the future, I think the biggest, the biggest thing that we saw with, with the, the lockdowns and such, and hopefully we don't have to go through some of this again, but, but we had a significant decrease in our, in our energy business. And, and that just, that wasn't just here locally, in, in Indiana or in our trade territory, that was nationwide. Um, the convenience store, the gas station business was off in some cases, 40% of the volume during that time. And that pushes back up the chain because nearly every gallon of gasoline today that is purchased has ethanol in it. Ethanol is made in this part of the country from corn. So that created a um, surplus of corn and an already, um, in a market that already had too much grain. We, we already have too much corn today. It's, it, it's, a, it's a commodity, so the supply mm -hmm. chain model works, and uh, we were already oversupplied and seeing significant pressure on, on those uh, commodity markets. Well, ethanol plants started shutting down or significantly, significantly decreasing their, their um, runtime. So we just backed the system up further. Those are things that don't just wash out overnight because those have significant effects on farmers um, profit and loss and and those are things that we just cannot say what will happen you know long term and and it will depend on how quickly things get back to what we call normal uh, but i don't think operationally i don't think that covid has been terribly dramatic i'll, I'll add with our employees we've had several tested that were um that were exposed or, or thought to be exposed to to someone that had um had the disease test positive. We today still had zero employees that have tested positive. Wow. Um, now I think a lot of that was, as Lindsay said, spring's our busy time. Most of our employees were going to work, working seven days a week in many cases, working daylight to dark and going back home. They're, they weren't out in the general public. So their family, their work family was probably spending as much time with them as their home family. So, um, I think it created just just a, a normal sense of um, being very cautious because they didn't have a lot of time to be out. Uh, but we feel fortunate that people haven't tested positive yet so far, too. That's incredible news. I When you think about the supply chain and the logistics that go into that, you don't think about, you know, if this plant in the West closes, how that affects the plants and the corn and the production in the Midwest. And so it's interesting to hear you talk about, you know, there's so much extra corn at this point because of something that happened somewhere completely different. Yes. Um, I 
I just, to me, that's a whole different concept. And I'm glad that we have such an amazing team to work through that. Um, I, both of you have been significant to the um, agribusiness community here. And I, I appreciate that. And I know our farmers appreciate that too. We appreciate your sponsorship with the farm tour. Um, you're always such a great advocate for our community and our chamber. So we appreciate having you here today. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm, um, like I said, I love having you here. I love getting to chat with you. Um, and I know this was a short interview, but just something that we can touch base and share what you're doing in the community. Real, real quick before we end, I wanted to add one thing. Um, our Hagerstown facility is, is just, just outside of between Hagerstown and Richmond there, south of 38. Um, we've done, we've done a lot of expansion there over the years. And, you know, we've talked about the farm tour and Lindsay and I have discussed this we'd be more than willing to host a tour of that facility too, to see how those, those inputs are, are pushed out to the farm. Okay. Um, we also last year went live with our first solar field there. So that facility um, has a solar field that, that a hundred percent of the electric use of that facility is generated with solar power. And, and it, it just reinforces, you know, a lot of times farmers get, get the image of, gosh, they use chemicals, they use fertilizer, they're not protecting the waterways. The farmers are always protecting the land. That that they live in the land. They live in these farms. Just the solar is something to, to reinforce. We're trying to find ways to to use um, smart energy and, and take care of the environment. That solar field is enough electric, produces enough electric to satisfy that plant. And that is equivalent to um, what 50 houses in Indiana would use in a year. Wow. So it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty large um, solar field and we're proud of it. And, and we're expanding that. We've done a couple other locations and are continuing to look at more opportunities there for the future. But if, if the chamber would like to work with us on doing a, a, um, a retail look at, at a tour, we, we more than welcome that. Well, that's definitely something we're interested in and maybe we can sit down and chat um, after this year's farm tour and talk sure. about what that looks like. That would be a great opportunity. Very good. Thank you both for joining us. I'm so thankful to have you and keep up the great work. Thank you. Thanks, Roxy. Roxy, it's always a pleasure.